Okay, greetings all. Uh, George Stanley here. So, um, just checking to see. Um, yep, yeah, it looks like we are streaming. So, um, Feli said he would uh, need another minute, and uh, that's totally cool. Um, let me just check here. I uh, should be joining any moment. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think conversations like these are good, right? Where people are uh, live and we can have, you know, frank conversations. It kind of uh, simulates, um, you know, talking like humans have always talked, right, for millennia. Uh, hello, Felix. How are you? Can you hear me? Uh, not too much, but it's enough. Okay, cool, cool. So, how are you doing today? Well, fine. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Do you hear me well? Yes, I can hear you fine. Actually, I invited you, but whatever. I mean, we That's came to true. the conference. You did invite me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, how's uh, Venezuela these days? Uh Currently, I'm at the, the Real Bitcoin headquarters with Chile. Look, there's Chile. Uh -huh. You see her? No. Here, uh, the dog. No, I, I haven't <laughs> seen her yet. Oh, yeah. Cool. Uh, so we, we, we're here at the, the Real Bitcoin Club headquarter in Maracay, Venezuela. And uh, we just arrived from the Bitcoin Cash Beach. And... Yeah, checking checking out what's going on here and uh, always making some uh, payments with the merchants that we already onboarded at Barrio Bitcoin. So that's what I'm up to now. Cool. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, I got a little burnt out on the whole local adoption thing, I have to say. Yeah, you know. disappeared. I'm not, sure. I'm not sure how to make it sustainable. Well, uh, when the people have income with BCH, it becomes sustainable, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think that's true. So, yeah, for example, with with Dash, uh, when Dash was doing the series of uh, conferences in Caracas, um, there was there was a lot of real uh, Dash activity afterwards because they just kind of handed Dash out to everybody. My, my idea was to to get the um, the farmers right to get the farmers to accept Bitcoin Cash, so they produce the food, they receive the Bitcoin Cash, and then from there it can flow into the whole economy. That's what I'm mm -hmm. actually now, more or less. Yeah, that's interesting. There was a, a Dash project also aimed at kind of uh, the similar, a similar idea. Um, but yeah, there were a lot of the Dash projects d had low accountability. So I, d I don't, I don't even know what happened with that. What, what kind of reaction have you gotten from the farmers? Well, uh, it's okay. It's just that right now here at Barrio Bitcoin, the people are saying that I'm the only guy who's actually making the inflow of the bch right so mm. they are it's just that it needs a lot of patience it needs a lot a lot a lot of patience and uh, job opportunities yeah yeah so you you had mentioned uh an idea like about a mess messaging do you want to tell us about that idea Yes, I will. But first, I would like to know what did you do the past two years? So you disappeared <laughs> some, and um, then they took over. BCH Latam was taken over by who was that guy? Juan? Jose. 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 Mm -hmm. and, and how come that you you now decide to come back and to get into coding? I was very surprised to see that you you studied some coding, and um, 
I would like to know what what inspired you to come back and yeah, why you why you keep fighting for BCH? You're not exhausted. <laughs> Yes, I am a little bit exhausted, but I did, I took like um, maybe a year and a few months off as a sabbatical to, you know, work on myself, you know, reduce my stress levels, um, you know, get, get into good, better shape, work on some private, you know, some things in my, my private life that I was neglecting. Um, and yeah, skill up on coding because uh, I think that is, um the the next i think that's really where where mm, people who want to see global adoption need to focus um you know i was working on dash adoption in the real world uh from 20 early 2018 then i transitioned into bch i was right in the middle of the uh, network split in 2020 of bch so i didn't realize it but I was really burnt out. I was exhausted. Um, so I needed to, to, to take that break. Yeah, um, I can imagine. Because you, you actually, you, you pulled off a lot of merchants and um, you, uh, that was my impression that you, you had very high ambition and um, yeah, you onboarded so many merchants, the team that grows so fast and it wasn't really sustainable. I, I was assuming and yeah, it was just too much for one person. Well, at one point that we were a team of uh, 80 people. So um, there were a lot of us. Um, yeah. It was a lot. I mean, manager. I mean, there... one manager, right? So I, I, when you manage 80 people, this is becoming really a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. I, I mean, I also had people who kind of, I, you know, I broke things down, you know, into teams and things that had different uh, focuses, but, um, but yeah, and there was, there was a lot of pressure, especially at Dash, you know, with the monthly funding cycle, uh, like every month it was like, well, George, you gotta like show some concrete, you know, progress. And so that just turned into more and more merchants. But in the but I quickly realized, I mean, within a few months of starting this, I realized that without, you know, what you just said, you know, inflows, people uh receiving it as income, that um, you know, this this wasn't gonna be sustainable. And that's when I started getting into trying to collaborate with the Dash people in Venezuela and the whole remittances thing. And you know that that just opened a, a big can of worms, which I, I still think remittances are promising. Yes, so it is kind of promising, but um, from my experience here, the people they still use seller. They still use seller, even if they can use Binance and it would charge less fee. They still use seller and they pay the ten mm -hmm. percent of. Seller. Um. Yeah, there is potential. Mm. People are still ignoring the opportunity that the remittance can be much cheaper with Bitcoin Cash and yeah, also with Binance and Binance UCT and all of this the combination, right? So um, Binance has has basically taken over the market in Venezuela. So everybody's using Binance. I don't know how is it in Colombia. Um, yeah. I mean, Binance is still quite big here. Uh, I can't use it anymore because they they refuse to serve expats. So all my expat friends got locked out of Binance. But yeah, it's still quite big here. They shut fact, you out. Yeah, Binance made deals. Yeah, they shut me out. They, but Binance made deals with at least one, maybe two of the big banks here in Colombia. Okay. They they recently got in some oh, recently they blocked the Venezuelan banks. So I don't know how it is here huh. with any deal banks, but they were not so yeah, I, I I heard they blocked the the transfer to the Bank of Venezuela, which is basically the government bank, which has also the Bitcoin um integrated already three years ago. But yeah, who wants to deposit his Bitcoin at the bank? No. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, some people have to, you know, but yeah. I mean, that's best avoided if possible. <laughs> Are you still there? Can you hear me? I'm here. I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for you to lead the, <laughs> to lead the, I'm, I'm not. Oh, not sorry. So I was, I was giving you an, uh, a space in case you wanted to say something and I wasn't sure because you know, the internet connection to Venezuela sometimes is an issue. So I, I wasn't sure. Yeah. If the, uh, yeah. It's actually much better this year. So it's also an important topic here in Venezuela that the population it, it wasn't ready to use uh, digital money until now, but now they are. So everybody has smartphones and the fiber internet has gotten into all the neighborhoods. Uh, it hasn't arrived at BCH Beach, but nice. it's a small town people so they use the the telephone line and all the telephone line it has improved a lot a lot a lot during the past year so that i'm having now this video chat right here at the headquarter with the same um i'm using digital so with the phone line a private mm -hmm. company that is actually a, a big improvement so this year is it, it, it's starting to take off it, venezuela wasn't ready for bc uh, wasn't even ready for dash so in 2019, 2020, the people weren't ready. They didn't have the phones. They didn't have the internet connection. Um, in in my work in Venezuela uh, with Adoption Venezuela, indeed, there were, I mean, I, I don't know if I would say they weren't ready, but uh, there w it was always, always an issue uh, to have, you know, a decent internet connection. And we went so far as to buy like uh, mobile uh, routers uh, to ensure at events that there would be uh, a decent connection. Yes, that's what I do. Yeah. So I think uh, one thing that we talked about before we uh, when we were setting up this call is that you suggested that I, I offered uh, someone. I think he's in uh, Nigeria. He expressed a little disappointment about, you know, some of the things that I said, um, you know, before I took my break. And I think and you suggested that, you know, I, I read what I said on air. So so I'll do that now. Yeah. Great. OK, so, yeah. So I said to him, him um, I guess Gideon is his name. I'm not sure. I said, I apologize. I was very discouraged. I was tired. I was burned out. And I was suffering from depression, some depression and anxiety. So that's why I took a break. I went quiet for, it was almost two years. I mean, I was like a year and a half. And also to scale up as a coder and project management, as well as to give time to personal matters I've been neglecting. So. Awesome. Awesome. That is, uh, that is very strong. A strong statement. Thanks. Yeah, I, I don't know. I wasn't really, um, I think I've been pretty vulnerable lately. I wasn't really able to do that before. Um, yeah, I had a bit of a rough childhood and uh, I've gone to therapy. I'm still doing some therapy. And um, yeah, it was very hard for me uh, before to, to be vulnerable, uh, really at all. So... Working culture can be good uh, therapy too, I think. They are so different here. I mean, here in South America, people can actually express themselves much. Well, I, I don't know actually anything about South America. I'm just talking about. Well, it looks like Fedley's dropped out. Let's see if we can get him back. So Felix does some some interesting work. Um, he has been in living in there. Yeah. There you are. I went to the house because the 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 trash the the yeah. Just so you know, you dropped okay. you dropped out for. So a moment, what I so wanted you know. to say is that uh, also the the Venezuelan culture for me has been a big therapy in um, communication uh, in in the European culture where I was uh, born. 
the people are much more uh, uh, opinionated, right? So they fight for their opinions. They really um, they identify with their opinions mm. much more. And here in Venezuela, I learned, hey, it's more relaxed. You don't have to fight for everything uh, about your opinion. Somebody else can have a different opinion, and he's still your neighbor. And you can fight today, and then you can say good morning tomorrow, right? So that will happen to me here in Venezuela quite a few times. It's really impressive. So, yeah, that's something. Yeah. Yeah, in Colombia here too, at least where I live in the Medellin area, people are very warm. Um, and I think that's what first attracted me, uh, you know, because I came here for the first time almost 30 years ago. And um, this family just basically adopted me, um, treated me as, you know, one of their own. And, um, you know, I think that's probably why I've spent now like a very large piece of my life here because... I got uh the the I got what I what I had never gotten in the United States mm -hmm. here, you know. And uh cuz like it, you know values like, you know, integrity and liberty and things like all of those kind of more intellectual values are all important. But there's a lot to be said for just like human warmth, you know. Mm Yeah, which I don't know about Europe. I've never been to Europe, but in the United States, uh, you know, you don't uh, you don't see it as much. At least not, you know, in the, the places so I was in. I was raised in the German school, and in the German school, there's only one correct opinion. So that is how the people get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I saw on your profile on Twitter that you are also in Miami <laughs> sometimes, or. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Cause, cause yeah, I mean, right now I'm kind of looking for a job, looking for a more permanent working situation. Cause the last like five years I've kind of been doing like Dow projects and, you know, flip starter projects. So I'm looking for something a little more uh, stable. So yeah, I don't know if I, I'll move back permanently to the U S or, or not. Okay. Well, I wish, I hope you will do another flip starter. <laughs> I don't know. Always, I don't know. Really, you were so I controversial. Know, I was always very surprised that Go ahead. you got funded, man, right? You got funded one time, two times. <laughs> you had success with your flip starter. And then the people actually like they like your work, uh, despite all of what the you know what the naysayers say. Uh, despite of all the people that like to practice censorship, like the moderators, they want to abuse their status because I don't know. Um, they are just a very small part of the BCH community. It is just yeah, just a very very few moderators that practice censorship. And they actually go active in, in harassing and mobbing. So uh, I would, yeah, I think you can easily ignore it. And um, yes. you can be proud of what you have achieved with BCH and Dash also. You have really written some kind of history in merchant adoption. And I was also able to to build on your work. So that here in Venezuela, the crispy donut, it was accepting BCH and it had all the stickers of the BCH, which was a great initiative, like the, the stickers with the QR code. It's very helpful. I will copy it. So then, Thank um, you. yeah, I, I could build on your work. So I could convince others easier to adopt BCH because crispy donut is well known here. <laughs> Or oh, yeah, you just you've been way too kind in what you just said. You really, that's really uh, nice. I, nice of yeah. you to say. When I have, yeah. I I have to give credit to you know Jose and the the team in um in uh, Venezuela uh, because they got crispy donuts and uh, I would have to check the database to see who exactly initiated um. 
that relationship. Uh, but I think it was uh, a young woman, a photographer. I can't quite remember her name at the moment, which I hate because I love giving people credit, you know. But I think I think it might have been her that initiated that that relationship with the chain. And indeed, I was amazed. Um, I think Olga, maybe her name was Olga. I was amazed, you know, that they got crispy. Really cool. It's like it's like kind of like yeah, Dunkin' really Donuts. Really big here, right? I mean, you've been in there. I have. Yeah, I visit visited. every everyone. Not every yeah. every crispy accepted at all times. And I did some reports, as you know. And um, but in in total, great great effort. In total, great progress. And um, yeah, it was just very 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 ambitious. So when whenever I had something to Thank critique you. about um, about BCH Latam or or you, it was only that, yeah, it, it, I mean, you were claiming numbers that weren't accurate, right? In the sense that I could really walk into the place anytime and I could pay any time, which, which is my standard, right? So, um, but uh, it, mm. it, it, you did actually, you did the work and you're one of the few that actually did the work. We had so many fake stars. I mean, like, what, what did Mark Falson promise or Ryan Giffing? And I don't see anything from them. I don't see any list of merchants that they have onboarded or anything. You were the only one who really uh, set up a website. You published all the Google links, all the addresses of all the places with photos. So that was really, really great work. Thank you. I, I've, mm, thank you. Yeah, I've watched your work as well over the years, you know, even when you and I have quarreled and whatnot and, you know, your videos and whatnot. And I've always found your work to be very genuine. You know, uh, I, I like your videos, um, you know, and how you really I think one time you you affiliated like a um, a fruit vendor to uh, that uh, Dash uh, mobile that dash yeah, SMS that was in Caracas, wallet. 2019. A guy selling bananas. Yeah, I. Yeah, I, I thought that was very cool. I like that. You know, I like that kind of real stuff. Yeah, you know? I, I actually focus a lot on on this opportunity that the, um, the merchants in Caracas, which are working on the street, they don't have the point of sale of the banks, and um, it was really for them to have a, mm -hmm. a different way of yeah receiving payments with uh, dash text but i also realize it, it's really dash not text, not right. sustainable so the text messaging is dying out it is not not the way i mean uh, yeah and and i think we we have to we, we have to make like a cut we cannot like bring in like everybody from the bottom right uh right away um as some kind of right they have to have a phone they have to have good internet they have to be uh, they have to be wanting to use their phone so um yeah these these things later i focus more on hmm yeah yeah it is it is hard um yeah, I mean, I, yeah, people have to have a phone, you know, they have to be willing to buy some mobile data sometimes or or the merchants, you know, have to provide uh, some mobile data sometimes. Um, yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, regarding, you know, people like Mark uh, Falson or um, Ryan, uh, I don't I don't know. I haven't followed their work closely. You know, I, I, I don't have anything negative to say about them, really, because I just don't know. I haven't paid, really paid attention. Um, but I, I do, and I know that I think some people have submitted merchants to map.bitcoin.com. But, like, we submitted all of our merchants to map.bitcoin.com, and they they were overwhelmed by that. And they rejected many legitimate merchants, you know. So I don't know if that map is really can really yeah. be counted on, no, you know. Counted on. Um, yeah, and all, and also, 
Yeah, and Bitcoin.com has been moving away from its BCH focus. Yeah, just... um, you know, I've I've been very critical of them in the past. I I'm not trying to hate on them. Like they should do what what's good for them. Um. Yeah, there was something else you said that I wanted to comment on, and I yeah, forgot. <laughs> So I will I will take the chance to say that what my issue with the bit, with the Map Bitcoin com is is that their database is not public. That is the, the the only big issue I have with them. So you send the data to them, and it's not public. The process is not public. And uh, yeah, I think it should be public yeah. so that everybody can use the data to build even better apps um, for all these merchants. And yeah. So you have a, a map, right? A, a Bitcoin map. I don't remember yeah. the URL, uh, but how, how do you want well, to tell us uh, about that? It it was actually the first um, Android app map for BCH, and when it started in 2018. Um, ah, by the way, you can read some kind of the history on on the domain the real Bitcoin dot club, the real Bitcoin dot club. So there you can see the history, and it was 2018 that I released the map. It was called Move Your BCH, okay? So the idea was like, move your ass, mm -hmm. but move your BCH. So you should actually use it, you should spend it, and um, just to incentivize this interaction. Um, that was the idea. It's still the idea. I, I didn't ever have the time to do all of this by my own and that's why it is at the status it is. So it is a map, it's a good map. It has like different interfaces, categories. It is um, built for large um, quantity of merchants. So it's really fast. It has searchable indexes and all of this stuff, which is really useful and it's open source. So if anybody would love to, to build on Android, uh, Flutter, you're invited to go to the repository. It's on GitHub. It's also called uh, the Real Bitcoin Club, and there you can find the repository and check it out. Cool, cool. Yeah, I also ended up building a map uh, with uh, Shomari, Shomari Prince, based on open street Saw maps. That. But uh, and it's oh, okay. Yeah, it's also sitting in a GitHub repo. Um, cause yeah, oh yeah, you mentioned earlier about Jose taking over the project. When I took a break, um, I, I invited him to take over the project and, um, and yeah, unfortunately in the process that, uh, got shut down, but that could, that could always come back as well. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I would love to see you launch another flip starter. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, definitely like, you know, my my therapist has recommended at this point that like I I step away from kind of the um the environment um Yeah. So, I don't I'm yeah, not sure I mean what I'm going to do. I still have a bunch. I have still a bunch of work pending from the the cash tokens tutorial flip starter. Uh, yeah, I mean, wait. Ah, that. you you got funded this flip starter. Yeah, wh what is that about? I, I didn't pay too much attention to these cash token videos um, because I um, yeah um, yeah I didn't have too much time. I was building right now. I was building an, an outpost at the BCH beach, so I was really stressed. Uh, I was, fighting with cool. the with the guardians of the national park they were saying i was not allowed to build and uh then the the the, the, the town they have some snakes you know there are some people that they're like they have some xenophobia and then they spread mm -hmm. rumors and uh all of this stuff and <laughs> it, it was a really intense experience and now i realize it's it's yeah it's just it's always coming out better than before it's really magical <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, that sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Um, but yeah, the that flip starter is about uh, writing a series of tutorials and supporting um, developers as they, you, as we all build with cash tokens. 
um, which is pr a pretty cool tech. I don't know if you know. Yes, uh, yes. I was it. actually also very grateful that the the developer Jason Dreisamer, it's bit Jason on on Twitter, that he actually asked mm -hmm. me what I would think about the cash tokens before it was launched, and he asked all the participants of BCH, like 500 shareholders. He did send an email and asked, "Hey, what do you think about cash tokens? Do you approve it?" And um, so that's how I, I learned about cash tokens. And I also have some of the gurus. Yeah. I, so I'm, I'm keeping up to date. Cool. And this series, let me ask, there's mm -hmm. a car passing. Um, this series, you're going to have it in English, right? The tutorials? So, yeah. Why, Why yeah. not Spanish? Well, if if I have time, you know, uh, I'll I'll try to make them available okay. in Spanish as well. But like I I set the flip starter for you know X amount of money and it got close, but it didn't complete. So I did it again for about one third okay. uh, the money. So I'm already kind of doing it at a very you know a deeply yeah. reduced price. So I don't know if. Yeah, I mean, maybe I, I can find an AI tool <laughs> to run the tutorials through it, and Absolutely. then I can just proofread. Absolutely, you're you know? you're the kind of guy who will be getting into AI. Yes, that sounds. Yeah, AI can give <laughs> lots of power to BCH if the people like, get into it, and yeah. And um, ask about the Spanish because yeah. actually here in Barrio Bitcoin, I have people that want to learn the coding that are really going into it that. They go on a cash rain, they receive cash rain, and then call me, wow, I want uh -huh. a cash rain. And I'm like, okay. I never thought that that would really take off this way. But um, there, there are there are people that want to get into it. I think it's more bigger opportunity if you produce Spanish content, I think. Mm. And the English content yeah. is more Investors, you yeah, know, like it's to. a little bit of a pity because when you make the Spanish content, there are not so many Spanish investors that want to fund it, right? But mm. that is the issue yep. that we have, I think. Yeah, it's true. Dur during this whole work, the these last few years, I've noticed there's a big, like, all of the people who are willing to fund things or vote to fund things are English speakers or Europeans, right? <laughs> But then the people that, you know, we want to adopt it or to build things or to, you know, get involved are not, right? They speak another language mostly. And then to to bridge that, the communication gap, because so many of our videos, we are, are in Spanish, you know? And then so people are like, oh, you know, it's in Spanish. I don't understand it, you know? And so then they maybe they don't fully appreciate the value and then and then funding becomes an issue and i've i've seen this happen to to many projects many i think it's even harder for people who whose first language is spanish like that i've seen doing projects in like the dash and bch ecosystems because they don't have the fluidity of communicating in english that i do yes yes um i, I was very surprised right now when i saw have you seen the latest of, um, there's this guy, elbitcoin.org, Majamalu. So there's a guy in Argentina and he yeah, has the sure. podcast and there was Jeremy on the podcast, the Jeremy from the BCH podcast. And he started studying Spanish mm -hmm. and he, he made the whole show. They made it in Spanish. So that was very beautiful to see. Yeah. Sweet. So maybe Sweet. Jeremy will also produce some Spanish content in one, two years. Who knows? That'd be great. Yeah. I mean, there are several hundred million, you know, Spanish speakers who are in places that, you know, have all kinds of financial limits, you know, I mean, just like the hyper or hyperinflation in Argentina, but also there's been, um, you know, a high level of inflation across all of Latin America, uh, you know, since 2020 or even before, especially here in Colombia. Like even in 2018, I remember inflation was like 18% mm. that year, you know, 
and it's only gotten worse. I mean, the there were the Colombian peso uh, when I first came here thirty years ago was like one thousand two hundred to the dollar, and today it's like four thousand. You know, um, and that's not good yeah. for people. Yeah, I see. You know? Also, yeah, we have so. lots of much more opportunity in the Spanish area, and um, yeah, it's really important. I think the Spanish one. Yeah, and I think Latin America is in a sweet spot because, um, you know, no no offense to the fine people promoting BCH in Africa and whatnot, but like the uh, Latin America is closer to a middle income, right? So they have more uh, like electrical and internet infrastructure, more people have phones, they have computers at home, right? So they're more able to take advantage. I think I didn't know that even not even in Nigeria is similar or Nigeria is similar because you had some context to that Nigeria, right? Uh, I did have somebody working with us uh, in in Nigeria. Briefly, yeah. And he's still involved in BCH. Is it no, right? no, 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 no. Um, no, although Noreen is still, um, active, you know, uh, and we talk from time to time, but, um, damn, I can't, I'm not finding him. I know his Twitter, uh, name, uh, or kind of, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll find him here in a minute. But I think there's enormous potential in Africa as well. I just think and that it, Latin America is a little bit better yeah. positioned, you know, because they're not, they're a little bit wealthier, you know, the infrastructure is a little better. And also in Africa, there, I think there's more of a variety of languages, you know, whereas you have 300 million yes. people who speak Spanish, you know, here. That's a yes. large market. Yes. Yeah. You have any more topics? I have to leave soon. Um. Um. I think we covered a lot. I think this is a great conversation. You know, maybe maybe we can do it again Not soon. Too soon, but uh, I actually, I, I no, because actually, <laughs> I don't have time. I have a, a waiting. Uh, I want to appear also with the with the El Bitcoin on Majamalu. Yeah, so 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 many weeks, and I was so stressed, and I just saw this. This opportunity that uh, you got this issue with the censorship, and I'm really, really, um, um, I'm, I, I'm pro free speech. So uh, I just wanted to know how are you, and just um, yeah, welcome you back, and and um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm glad we've had this conversation because um, I know we've we've had a little bit of um, you know disagreement in the yeah. past. So um, you know, and during that time, I've I've admired you know the the work that you've done. Um, so I'm glad that we're we're on good terms again. And um, and indeed, I, I I I've been disappointed by the censorship, especially in RBTC. Yeah. Yeah, it's really an issue. The censorship is really, really a big issue. And um, it is actually the only thing that ever causing drama, right? So actually the moderators that are practicing the censorship, hmm. they are causing the drama and then they blame the guy they censor that they would be causing the drama, right? Uh, if you just let the people speak freely, yes. then nothing is going to happen let them speak and and don't take everything so serious and just let's grow together and make mistakes together and whatever and if one day you have a bad day and the other day you're okay oof, who cares i mean it's not so yeah yeah so i'm i'm yeah it doesn't have to be all yeah, perfect this yeah, yeah. We can yeah, let go this, a little. Is, this is the, the attitude of the moderators, right? That they know what's perfect and they know how to lead the conversations and they take the decision for everybody else who's in the forum, right? So it's not that they just affect the yeah. person they are censoring. They're affecting all the users because they are not able to communicate with that person. 
And it's it's really not the time. It's really, we're 2023. Yeah. And it's just really that we, we got that, we have to get this fixed once and for all. It's like, I'm tired of this conversation. And that's also why I left Reddit, right? So I don't spend anything on Reddit anymore. Yeah. Not even Telegram, because even Telegram, it was good in the beginning. And I was connecting so much on Telegram when it was with Smart, Smart Beat CH. And then slowly the same creepy sensors, the same creepy mm-hmm. moderators from Reddit came into Telegram. Not to name uh, one guy, Cheap Lightning, uh, specifically. Mm. So, and then he just fucked around and and censored again, and this just so annoying. So I left Telegram, I left Reddit, and I just focused on the real world, yeah. the real people. I see the progress in my neighborhood, and um, and that's actually how I found it to work for me. Just ignore the Reddit, not read it. It's not mm. worth it. It's everything. All the news they are on Twitter. And I'm very impressed about Twitter. They unblocked the Real Bitcoin Club. So the Real Bitcoin Club, it was banned in 2018. So s- shortly after I launched the club, we were censored on Twitter. And until recently when Musk took over and he mm. unbanned us. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, in... in um in cheap lightnings uh, defense a little bit like i i don't think you know he's i don't think he's evil i don't think he has bad intentions you know um i think he he has yeah i don't know you know i don't know i've always wanted to be on good terms with these people um yeah i don't know what to say uh i mean i do i like i don't know i i'm trying to get on good terms with him i don't know what even what i have I think to do, it's important. but um but that's they, you know, they, just, think... they have they have an opinion Go ahead. Go and they ahead. don't want to even think about the look what, what would it mean for a person like um like cheap lightning to now admit that maybe m- m- maybe he was wrong the past years censoring right so that's so why it's so difficult for him to make a change hmm. right so if he would now stop censoring a person or what, then he would mm. practically admit that he made big mistakes the past years. And I'm not sure if he's ready to admit that. So, um, yeah, these are the things. Um, I also don't know if it's bad intention, if he's paid actor. I don't know. I, I always assume everything is possible. I also called you an agent quite a few times. So, um, yes, so- you did. <laughs> My son and I laugh about that because, yeah, you're not the only person. Like, I've been called, like, a CIA agent and stuff. I mean. Actually, look, it's, um, it's, not, look, it's like a barking dog, okay? I, um, when a dog barks, he wants to see how the human reacts. If the human reacts calm, the dog will not do anything because the dog knows that the human has nothing <laughs> to hide or something, right? But they, they're the how I how, yeah. how I communicate sometimes, right? So when I say, "Yeah, you're an agent," I want to see how you react to this. It's not that I'm. I'm told- <laughs> you're not. You're not the only one who does that. You you like BCH autist uh, came at me with some some things that I considered out of left field, and then later he said, "Well, I'm, they were just I was just trying to see how you reacted." The thing is, I have been diagnosed with uh, obsessive compulsive personality disorder. And one of the facets of that is that one is very sensitive to criticism, right? And so uh, that's something I have to work on, uh, that I have been working on, I'm going to continue working on, such that I don't overreact, uh, like when people say things like that, because I have done that in the past. Uh, Maybe I'm still doing it in the present, you know. Sometimes I Um, I overreact, yeah. Put that out there. Sometimes I get into the the battle of the egos Mm. and... Yeah. Mm, yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. But, you know, as far as like Reddit and whatnot, like I've realized I've been researching into Noster recently, and there it's possible to have like subreddits with Noster, and that's uncensorable or censorship <laughs> resistant, I should say. And so I was thinking it might be good, you know, if if we have uh, like a, a BCH um, Noster. Yeah, you know, that's a great topic for our next. For our next. Yeah. Okay. So. 
Yeah, sure. That's a yeah. great topic. How we can progress from here, build something great, maybe, and maybe get you back on yeah. board and um, do some great open source project. Who knows? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Well, I know you got to go. It's, I have right? to go, really. Okay. Well, I, well, I just want to say thank you, Felix. I've, I've really enjoyed this conversation with you. Uh, I'm glad that, you know, we're talking. Um, thank I you. I like that a lot. So. Thank you. And I hope you have a great day. And also, uh, your, your video is not finished uploading. So okay. maybe if you can leave it. Uh, it's at 77%. Yeah. So maybe if you can leave it, you know, you can turn off your cam and your mic if you want. But if you can just leave the app okay. on for a minute. Okay. I will leave the phone here in the... In the place where it has good connection. But can I shut down? Okay. Cool. And I'll, I'll, I'll ping you on. I shut down the screen or I leave the screen as it is? Sorry? I, you can uh, mute yourself and turn off ah, the, the, um, oh, okay. your camera. Okay. Yeah. And I'll, I'll ping you on Telegram. It's, it's at 77% right now. Number, so I'll ping yeah. you on Telegram. Once it's at a hundred. Okay, so how do I? All right, I don't very want good. To... I'm gonna stop the recording then. Can I touch the back button?